out. How many players do you have available for your League Cup match with Chelsea, bearing in mind you've had so many positive COVID cases? <laughs> Enough. <laughs> we will put 11 players out there tomorrow, that's for sure. Uh, in, no, we, we are in a, we're in a fine place. Um, I, I guess there will come a few questions about the COVID situation, so I, I, can, I can probably start there. Um, so Thursday last week, I asked for, I thought it was a, that we thought it was a good situation, a good, good thing to postpone the round. Um, it was not that far off. Six games were, were postponed. One last minute, which is unfair for the fans. Uh, clearly, our opponents tomorrow, Trugal, were quite unhappy with their game going on. So that could easily have been seven. Um, but whatever, if you should only focus on ourselves, that helped us massively uh, because we closed our training ground later that um, day on Thursday. So that meant that we had Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, not on the training ground. That helped us to break that circuit of uh, transmission of the virus. So from having six or seven positive cases on that Thursday, to the next testing round <clears throat> Saturday with uh, lateral flow and PCR test. We only had one on the Saturday, zero Monday, uh, and zero today. So we are definitely in a fine place uh, going into uh, to the game on Wednesday or tomorrow. Sorry. You were quite honest and open about wanting to cancel games over the course of the weekend because you thought that was the right thing to do. Like you've touched upon there, so many matches were, were already called off, both in the Premier League and the EFL. When the teams met on Monday to discuss not playing some games and trying to, to keep everyone safe and the fact that that decision was made that they should carry on playing games, were you surprised at that? Uh, no, because what I... What I suggested was, or we suggested, was just one round. Um, uh, so, as it happened with us, to, to break that circuit, that, that you, you know, you could clean the training ground, you know that um, in, 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 in incorporation time for the virus is four or five days. So, you, you know, you, you limit the contract uh, b between the players and staff. Um, I think we are all interested uh, across society, but also in football, to do things as normal as, as possible in this in these strange times. Now we experience it quite quite yeah almost two years, and um, so we like to carry on with the football. Uh, I think we all want to. I want to. The club want the players. I haven't spoke to any other club or players that, that I also think they want to to carry on. So the better uh, we can do that, um, the better it will be. I think we've seen in Wales that no fans will be allowed to watch games. Scotland have announced in the last hour or so that a maximum of 500 fans can go to games. Are you fearful that something might be introduced into the Premier League? I think uh, after what happened the last two years, um, I, everything can happen. So I think the one word is that we need to be able to adapt um, everyone um, across society and especially in the in the football world. Um, if, if the decision is that, that there is no fans... I think it's, it's very sad. Um, but if that's the right decision to make, then the government, uh, government uh, will, will make that decision. I think we, 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 they have done the first step, you know, demands uh, corona passes, which I think is the right thing to do uh, and limit, uh, limit that. Um, so, so I think that's the first step. Let's see what will happen. And a football question. Chelsea, League Cup quarterfinal. Um, you know, a huge opportunity for this football club. There's been so much progress made over the last um, few years with, with everything that's been happening both on and off the pitch. What, what type of a, a sort of marker is this for, for how much progress the club has been made? But, but surely for you, not just a game that you want to go and play, you want to go and win and, and get as far in this competition as possible. Yeah, I uh, agree, Mark. I, you know, from the beginning of, of this season, we wanted to progress as, as far as possible. We want to really want to see if we can go all the way. Uh, it's one game at a time, so the next game is tomorrow against uh, the European winners. Um, we had a fantastic game against them, uh, yeah, I don't know, two months ago, relatively uh, lately. Um, so we're looking forward to it. We believe we can progress. We believe we can win the game. We know we're going to be 
very difficult. It's always been a, a statement, already been a statement that we are in the quarterfinal for the second year in a row. We never went to the semifinal. We did that last year. Can we do that one more time? That would be, a, I think, a massive statement, you, you, you know, massive statement. Thomas, I'll let everyone else have a go because there's lots of people wanting to have a chat with you. Thanks very much. All the best. Thank you, Mark. Likewise. We'll go to uh, Phil Parry next, BBC London. Thomas, good afternoon. Thanks for your thanks for your time. Um, so the game is on, which which is absolutely fantastic, Thomas. Uh, in in many mis respects, um, considering everything that you've been through and Chelsea have been through, uh, how strong a game will this be, though? Hi, Phil. Uh, good to see you. Uh, in terms of in, in, in terms of the teams they they put out. Yeah. Uh, I can say we'll put a strong team out there. Um, I don't know what Chelsea will do. Um, and um, you, you can say now we haven't played for 10 days, so maybe that affect the decision. Uh, I would say no. No one can prove it, of course. <laughs> but my plan, and I said that, I tried to be as transparent as possible. I think we showed that against Stoke, for example, last, last game, we were a very strong team out there. Um, for, for me, we had that run of games that was supposed to be 10 uh, games over five weeks and I would have you know what I what my thought were when we started that uh, that uh, run of games were to put a strong team out change two players and another two players you know through that spell of games so you you keep a little bit of rotation but also a lot of players will be, play between eight nine starts you know and then a little bit of rotation and and the Chelsea game would just have been another of those very very important games and Obviously, as you were saying to Mark before, you know, this is a competition that you've identified. You got to the semi-finals, got so close last season. Tough opponents that you faced with Chelsea, but the, the season's been very positive this year. Last year, of course, you know where it feels to get to the last four. Is there any, there's no fear, is there, for your squad going into this game, surely? No, 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 no. We, I think we, 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 we've proven all the games we played so far in Premier League that we, we can compete. Um, and we are difficult to play against. Uh, I expect us to be very difficult to play against uh, again tomorrow. Um, I know we're playing against Chelsea, and uh, we also saw the first 60 minutes that last game that, that uh, yes, they, they, let's say, controlled the game more and were more on the ball, but they were not that dangerous. They scored a, a very good goal, but they didn't create much. Um, and then the game changed the last 30 minutes, and, and hopefully we can play more of the last 30 minutes tomorrow than... Than the first sixty, but most likely is going to be a combination of the two uh, two um, two spells in the game. Um, that, that's what I expect. And just in regards to supporters, is again, Mark was saying that we know that there are limitations being put placed in Scotland and Wales. Who knows what may happen in England? Therefore, do you expect the atmosphere to even be even more special tomorrow night? Maybe because supporters may be feeling that it could be a last opportunity on mass for a few weeks. Um, I try myself not to worry about too much what's going to happen in the future and only think about what, what, what's happening now in the moment um, and I hope the fans will do that as well but I think if you do what you can to make sure the, the next game is the most important game in your life uh, as a fan uh, and as a player um, th then I think we get the most out of it that, that's, try, what, that's how I try to live my life um, I hope they will do the same. I think a quarterfinal against Chelsea, local London derby, under the floodlight, it's Christmas, close to maybe make a little Christmas miracle. You know, what is not to like? We, we should go out there and attack, and I hope the fans will be right behind us. Uh, and just finally, for me, the, the team obviously, I know not playing at the weekend, but as you say, can have confidence going into this game. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, you, you, we, we, we actually, I think after, I've also been speaking about it in these press conferences, I think the, the last four games, uh, was it Everton, Tottenham, Leeds and Watford, was very promising. I think all four of them were, we were back to that defensive, solid, aggressiveness, very difficult to break down. Also, I think the Tottenham game, I know they, they, they scored some goals and had some chances, but in general, that game again were, were a good performance. So can we can we build on that? Um, then then I think we we are in a good place. Brilliant. Best of luck. See you tomorrow, Thomas. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Ian Abrams, please talk to Hi, Thomas. How are you? I'm good, Ian. How are you? 
All right, okay. Um, feels like we've gone right back almost to the beginning uh, regarding this virus. And how feasible is it every year for football to gradually open up and then gradually have to go back again? And, and what does it have to learn if it's going to carry on? Because this virus is never going to go away. Carry on as normal. I, I, you know, that, very difficult to predict the future. But, but I agree with you that, uh, you know, looking back on the last two years, it seems like next winter we'll have the same issue um, one way or another. Hopefully we are, uh, uh, you know, experience some kind of immunity uh, across everyone so it can be even more normal. Um, one thing is for sure, I loved every minute of every game we played with the fans, home and away. I think it's been a fantastic Experience is just something special to play first and foremost at home in front of our fans, but also to play away in front of a, a lot of other away fans, creating a special atmosphere. So, so that's the bit we, we will miss massively if if uh, if the fans were you know not banned, but you know it was closed down because they're not allowed to come to the, to the games. But but let's see. Um, tomorrow we will have a full stadium, and I'm looking forward to that. On a, on a mental health front. Um, just describe the, the mental health of your players right now in terms of whether they're uh, happier because you've had this shut down at your training ground or, or are some of them still scared that they, they could go out on the field and catch it or, I mean, just, just give us an idea of not the footballing side of your players in your squad right now, but the mental side. I think, I think from the player perspective, and this is, you know, really... I haven't spoken to every single one of them about this question in depth. Um, so it's difficult to me to really nail it in terms of how they feel and, and their, in terms of their mental health. But I haven't, that, there's not one come to me and said, Thomas, you know, I'm a little bit insecure about this. You know, it would be nice not to play or train. I think in general, and this is just my opinion, I think they, they don't fear to get the virus uh, uh, because they are, all science, all data shows that they're healthy young people and they're very un unlikely to, to get very ill. And a lot of them in our squad are double vaccinated and we put a booster clinic out Saturday. So I don't think from that perspective, it's, it's, it's a big, big thing, just me in my opinion. Um, I think it's actually a little bit more the staff because the staff members are more from 32 plus 60. Uh, or plus 70. Um, and I think there's a big issues there with a lot of them having families and small children and, and all that that can affect. So I think sometimes, I know the players are the high profile ones and get paid the most money, but you know, no teams without a fantastic staff behind them. And I think we need to think really, really much about the staff uh, members much more than, we, than the players sometimes. Uh, so I, I care about both players and staff, but I think sometimes we tend to focus most on the on the players. A couple of football questions to end. Ivan Tony hasn't played for a while because of injury and, and, and the virus. Um, tomorrow's a great chance, isn't it, to get some game time into him? Yeah, definitely. I think it's a great game, a great uh, opportunity to get a game time into a lot of players. Um, even that they were uh, out running uh, uh, during the week where we were the, uh, the training ground was closed, uh, for, where they were running for themselves. Uh, you could just see it was only one week. So when we trained Monday, uh, and of course, big, big focus on getting that intensity and physicality back to it. So, but all of them are just saying, oh, you know, it's, it's quite tough. And that's just show that consistency in training is, is important for everyone. Um, so I think a lot of the players looking forward to, to play. And last one, your league position is very healthy at the moment. I don't think you're going to go down. I don't think you're going to be involved in a relegation fight. You you might differ, but uh, that's just my point of view. Does that give you a free, free hit tomorrow? Because you want to get to the semi-finals again. You haven't got to worry about a promotion or a relegation. You can you can really give it a go. I yeah, I understand that in terms of the the pressure from the outside for everyone. Maybe, but but for us, I think it's we we see it as a massive opportunity massive opportunity to to go to the semi-final and and last year we we, we did the same uh, and that's where we were fighting in a in a in a tough uh, um, promotion battle and uh, and in playing even more games than this year 
um, on, under even more extreme circumstances than, than this year, actually. So, uh, yeah, not a free hit, big opportunity. Good luck and uh, good to see you back in action. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Sean Walsh, please. Hi, Thomas. How are you? Hi, Sean. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. Um, you've talked before about the different qualities you need to be a manager and a leader. How tough has it been for you in terms of being a leader in the pandemic? Because surely no amount of training beforehand could prepare you for this. And you've spoken quite um, eloquently about the pandemic. Um, it's definitely more challenging. <laughs> definitely. Um, you just nailed it there. Uh, you, you can't prepare for, for, for that situation. So you hope that all your experience uh, you have gained through the through the years standing in, in, in different difficult situations uh, help you to take to take sensible decisions and, and try to, to take the best possible decisions. And also I think I think it's also a little bit going with your gut feeling. Um, and the way I do it, I, I gather information for from a lot of people um, and then put everything together, uh, adding my gut feeling, and then I try to uh, take the best decision. You spoke um, a little bit earlier about um, a few members of staff worrying about the recent outbreak. How did you cope with the outbreak, both as Brentford head coach and on a personal level? Because I imagine it must have been stressful for you as well. Yeah. Um... More, you know, the way I think every manager and head coach wants to play the best team. So we always get annoyed if there is an injury. And I compare this, I know it's different, compare the virus a little bit to a, to a, to a minor injury. I know it's a disease where you can, a virus where you can get, if you're unlucky, be incredible, ill, and, you know, some, some people can die from it. But, but you know, the most cases is, you know, uh, harmful. Uh, you know, it doesn't hurt uh, the, the most of the people that much. It's, it's a hard flu. Uh, um, uh, so in that case, I'm not worried about getting it myself. I already had it once. I double jabbed. I got my boost on Saturday. So can I get it again? Yes, because a lot of people get it again. So so it's more that um, all that you need to take decisions about and um, that you want to play your best team and you want to compete. I, I think that's, and you, and of course, my caring for all the staff and the players, if, if they're okay. Cheers, Thomas. You're welcome. We have John Lupo next, please. Hi, Thomas, how are you? Hi, John, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Uh, so let's start off with a football question. I know we've talked about in the past the depth that you have in the defense. I noticed that the club website did a feature on uh, Vitaly Janelle. I hope I'm pronouncing his last name properly. But just what have you seen from him in this last calendar year, sort of towards the last few months when you were in the championship and now that you've been up in the Premier League? What have you noticed about his play that's pleased you? Vitaly? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, first and foremost, unbelievable mentality and presence. Um, from the first time I met him to uh, uh, talk uh, about coming to Brentford to the first training session where he stepped in, I always make this, you know, when you're a midfielder and I have this specific possession game you play and you need to be in the middle and I need to see how we scan and, and um, anticipate things. So just bang on to so just stepping into that 11-11 drill we had later where you can just see there was this, you know, presence um, to to how he just keep developing and then you just walk straight into this group and he's he's a young player coming from a from a from a from a different country very very impressive i must say um and one of these players i think the most coaches are love you know absolutely uncomplicated uh, what you see is what you get if i ask him to play uh, midfielder yes uh, striker yes Wing back, yes. Centre back, yes. Even goalkeeper, You're just yes. Thomas, no problem. I'll do it. And, you know, so <laughs> and it, it, it's fantastic. Um, so I think he's uh, he turned in to be um, uh, a, a big, big leader and a big um, driver of our culture and the way we do things at Brentford. 
with all of these games being postponed, with the Manchester United game being called off and the Southampton game being postponed, is there any way that you keep the players that can come into the training ground? Is there a way to keep them sharp? How do you yourself prepare for first having to prepare for a match and then having it called off? What can you do just to keep the team, you know, fresh and ready to go when you do resume as you will tomorrow against Chelsea? Um, I think, of course, um, so, so the players who... Who, who got COVID, the, uh, had COVID, of course, they need to isolate for 10 days. So uh, the, the, the positive thing is that most of them got, if not a home gym, then then bits they can do, uh, try to stay as fit as possible. Um, in this build where we couldn't train, we had programs for them so they could run, uh, they could do what they could do to keep the fitness. Um, I think that that's the, that's the bits we can do. Just a couple more. I know that you're concerned first foremost about your own players, but I saw a statistic a couple of days ago that it was a certain percent, I forgot the exact number of players that were that did get the double jab and got their booster. And I know it was lower than probably people on the Premier League wanted. Is there is there, in your opinion, anything you think that the Premier League or the FA, whoever might be in charge, can do to make sure that the players don't get it? Because from my I mean that the players do get the the vaccine, because from my point of view, whenever a team plays a team, it's possible that they, like Watford, after they played you, they had the match against Burnley, and then Burnley had their match against Villa, called off at the last minute. Is there anything that you think that the the Premier League could do to make sure that there's a higher percentage of players getting the, the vaccine? Honestly, no. Um, I think the players and football clubs reflect uh, how the world looks across society, let's say UK, and there's no one who's 100% vaccinated. So I don't think that that will happen, um, um, to, to be honest. Um, I think we do what we can do. Uh, we will. We do what we can. Uh, we, can I, we can only speak for myself. We, we, we speak to the players. We try to come with good arguments for why to take it. And we have a very high number of uh, players that are double vaccinated and, and got their booster. So so I think we are in a, in a, in a good place. Um, I'm I'm pleased that we're living in a free world where people can can you know make their own choices. I think that's that's fantastic. Uh, do I try to convince my players to take the vaccine? Yes, because I believe in it. Uh, um, but yeah, I think it's it's in, you know I don't think we will see 100. Um, percent uh, vaccinate, vaccinate players across the league. Finally, the final question I had was, you mentioned that you made the semifinals of this uh, tournament last year. You were in the championship, so maybe people thought it might be, despite how much talent you had, a bit of a surprise. Do you think the way you've played so far in the Premier League, you mentioned the way you played against Chelsea the first time you played them, do you feel like that a team like Chelsea will come in and have more respect for you guys and know what they're since they've already even though they won already know what they're in for because they've come here and they know how tough it'll be do, do you just feel like the stature of the football club is different in a later stages of a competition like this now that you're in the premier league as opposed to when you did this in the championship last year um, yeah maybe 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 um, I, I, yeah, I do hope that our performances uh, are recognized out there. Um, but, but I, I also these days every club, you know, prepare well. Um, it's the same for us. If we prepare against the League Two side or League One side, you know, we do everything we can to do the exact same thing in preparation uh, that we do for Premier League game. Uh, and I think that. Chelsea hopefully had a respect for us before, and they also had respect after the game. Um, do do they know they 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 have a tiny bit better chance to win because they're the European champions? Yes, but in football everything can happen. So, so I, yeah, I, I think you're right. I hope there's a bit more, you know, awareness about us. But I don't know if that's good or bad for us. <laughs> or maybe then they play to a ten out of ten uh, performance. But let's see. Cheers. Good luck tomorrow, Thomas. You're welcome. So just a reminder, we're still under immediate embargo. We'll go with uh, Jim Conlon next, please. Hi, Thomas. Uh, Thomas, two questions for you, but the most difficult question for you first. Um, 
Jorgen Klopp came out recently and he said about the January transfer market, he said he won't be signing unvaccinated players. And he gave his reasons for this. He said they have to change in a different dressing room, they have to eat in a different dining room, they have to sit in a different bus, they have to drive in a different car. And for an organisational point of view, it gets really, really messy. I'm just wondering, you said you respected players' moral views. Does that affect your transfer policy? Are you using a similar line of thinking in, in terms of Jorgen? Um, good question. Hi, Jim. Um, I, I think right now I'm not thinking about transfers. Uh, um, if you ask me about it, you know, I'm a little, I think it's a tricky one. Um, I think we all know that it's a plus that if you have your vaccination, but uh, I think first and foremost, I need to be a good player. Yeah, Matt, that's a difficult one over, uh, Thomas. We'll get on to the, the fo uh, football in question now. Marcus Force, the leading scorer in this competition, five goals going into it. And when you have a player on form and you're the leading goal scorer in this competition, obviously you're raring to go for this in a quarterfinal. He's the man in form. Will he start? Good question, Jim. You will see tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he definitely he's a player that I'm very pleased with. Uh, very pleased with his performance against Watford when he came uh, from the bench and he um, he uh, made an assist for, for Pontus uh, with a crucial flick uh, and he caused problems for, 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 for Watford. So um, let, let's see uh, what we'll do. Thomas, there's more people, so I'll, I'll let you go for now. Thank you, Jim. Killian, please. <laughs> Hi, Thomas. Um, you, you mentioned there people can make their own choices in relation to the, the uh, getting the, the jabs. The Premier League saying 84% 80, of players are on their uh, vaccination journey. Do you think unvaccinated players should be counted as COVID absentees? Mm, I can't, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, um, <laughs> I think it's a it's a big call when you 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 know you take decision that influence other people's life if they want to take the vaccine or not. Um, I, I'm very honestly very in doubt what is right and wrong in in this case. Um, we, I think we're living in a world where we are trying to con convince people with good arguments and uh, for what for why they should take the vaccination. And that's that's what we believe in in Brentford. That's what we try to do every single day to the players who. Are not vaccinated, uh, or staff members who are not vaccinated. And finally, just on the the meeting yesterday with the clubs, are you happy that if 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 kind of di uh, worse scenario comes, that the the clubs will make a decision based on what's best for the players? Uh, I don't know if I understand that question. Could you please try to uh, the the meeting of the the clubs yesterday? Yeah. Are, are you happy that going forward, if there is a difficult decision to be made? on cancelling rounds that it, it will be made? Uh, you know, in terms of if there's enough players available or...? Uh, yes, if uh, in terms of enough players available or if uh, uh, player uh, clubs can't field teams for one reason or another, do you think that from what you've, you learned yesterday, are you happy that clubs will make a different decision if it needs to be? Um... What, the only thing I want and also said earlier was that I think it, the, the, the crucial thing is that we there's clarity and uh, clear lines uh, for when we make a decision or not make a decision if the, ball, if the game should be played or postponed. And I just heard something about that. that if you have 13 players available and a goalkeeper, you need to play the game. If that's the rule, okay. As, soon as, there's, as, as long as there's consistency across... Um, uh, every club uh, behind every decision, fine for me. Um, that, that's just what I what I want. Um, I still in doubt. I, at least I haven't been told. Um, so, and if it's if it's still not correct or not haven't changed, I think that that it, it has to be um, it has to be changed. I think you need to be completely transparent. The number of cases from each each club. I I, I can't see why. Yes, we had thirteen cases. Six is players from the 25 man squad, seven are staff members. I think that should be completely open and transparent. So everyone, because we know all of us want to do the best for ourselves and we're not 
looking at the bigger pig. Yeah, we are looking at the bigger picture, but just until a certain stage, then if it's you know influence us too much, then we'll do everything. We oh, sorry. Uh, then we will do everything we can to um, uh, to, to to change that. So I think that's so 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 important. That is cl clarity. Thanks, Thomas. You're welcome. Let's pull Brown next, please.